You're listening to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Alex and Megan of Zesty Ginger. If you're looking to naturally balance hormones and learn how to work with your body instead of against it, you've definitely come to the right place. As a duo of an integrative MD and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and best friends, we use the four phases of the female cycle in combination with functional lab work and mindset practices to transform the lives of the women we work with. We also have a whole lot of fun along the way. If you're new around here, it's best to start with season one before jumping around and plan to roll up your sleeves. Showing up for ourselves and enjoying our lives is what good health is all about. Just a quick reminder though, this information is not intended to diagnose, manage, or treat disease. Always consult with your doctor before making changes. Hey there, welcome back to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast. Megan here with you, and I have a great interview to share with you today. I interviewed Brian Richards, who is the founder of Sauna Space, last week, and I was really excited to to interview him. Dr. Alex and I both have a sauna uh, from Sauna Space. We also have one of their photon lights. We use them all the time. So I was excited. What I didn't realize was how much I would learn. I was blown away by what he shared. We ended up talking for over an hour. And since the interview, I have a newfound love for my sauna space. I go in every day and now I'm really feeling and understanding even more of the benefits that I wasn't aware of. We've been using our photon light for sleep for my kids. Some little tips he shared in the interview. He even shared some ways to essentially create some of the benefits if you can't afford a sauna. It was a really awesome interview. And at the end, bonus, he said, hey, what if we do a giveaway and give away one of the photons, it's a $349 value, to you all. So how cool was that? So you are going to see on our Instagram post today, so at zesty underscore ginger, you can find us and find our latest Instagram post, and that will have the details on how to enter the giveaway you're going to have until next Tuesday to enter. Uh, Brian and I will also be live next Monday, November 23rd at 12 Central Time, his time 1 Eastern Standard Time on Instagram Live. If you want to ask more questions after you hear this interview, he is an amazingly knowledgeable human who created this product out of a need for himself. And we all know what happens when we start with a need for ourselves and where that goes. So let's get right into the interview. As always, we'd love if you would leave us a review. We would love feedback. Email us, support at sustyginger.com. Leave a review, eh, share with a friend, text to a friend, share on social media, anything you can do to get the word out there so we can have more amazing guests like this. Hey, Brian, welcome to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast. We are so happy to have you here. Thanks for having me, Megan. So today we are talking with our special guest, Brian Richard, the founder of Sauna Space. And we've gathered lots of amazing questions from our listeners all about uh, saunas, what they can do, what the different types are, who do they best serve. And I would love to just start, Brian, by hearing a little bit about how you ended up with a company that sells saunas because I know uh, like myself and Dr. Alex, a lot of us ended up in this health space because of our own predicament. And it sounds like that might've been yours. So if you could tell us a little bit of the story of how you ended up in this field, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, I had a health issue and, and uh, through my own efforts determined this to be my solution. And it was exciting because I figured it out on my own and also kind of, I didn't get any help or thought leadership from doctors or healthcare practitioners. I, I kind of empowered myself by going online and, and doing research and seeing what other people are doing out there and came to this. So I was dealing with a lot of adrenal fatigue issues. Uh, that's self-diagnosed by the way, essentially I had trouble sleeping. I things that actually, uh, uh, a lot of similarities between that and, and premenopausal symptoms, honestly. Um, you know, I, I had, I was anxious. I was uh, lethargic. So I had low energy. 
I had brain fog and lack of clarity and ability sometimes to focus as well as I thought I could, even though I'm not a stupid person. I consider myself to be, you know, uh, when my brain's working right to work well, but I had all of these issues and I had really weird acne on my torso. And um, I, when I was told by a doctor or recommended by a, a doctor to take Accutane, it was a big shock for me because that's actually a drug that's now been taken off the market since it's heavily linked to liver cancer and other things. And I was like, this is not right. There's gotta be something that's going on because I didn't have this stuff before and why do I have it now? And, and can I deal with it on my own? And so I started to do my own research on alternative health options and kept coming back to sauna and this idea that you could detox that through detoxification through cleansing of the body and rebuilding the body in this kind of natural built-in way you, you can address a lot of these symptoms and maybe even most of them or all of them and and ultimately that needs to be coupled with a good diet and paying attention to what you eat but um all that to say that I kept coming back to sauna. I saw modern research, thousands of studies on how amazing it is for humans and for our health in general, as well as uh, I, uh, noting that every human culture on earth has a sauna tradition of some kind. So we have kind of the ancestral wisdom and it's really harmonizing nicely with the modern empirical observations and studies. So it made a lot of sense. At the end of the, my research, I discovered the incandescent sauna, which is actually originally named the electric incandescent light bath. It was invented by Dr. Harvey Kellogg, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. And uh, so basically he invented this right after light bulbs were invented. He said, let's use these light bulbs as, as the heater in our saunas. There's something special about this light. So in 1904, by 1904, he had uh, treated 50,000 patients, over 200,000 sauna sessions, and all of them were invalids, which is a now a politically incorrect term for people with chronic disease. And he had amazing results. He was curing and dealing and, and uh, uh, resolving everything he came up against. And so he wrote a book about this called Light Therapeutics in 1910. And you can read about it. It's, uh, it's online. And he mapped it all out and, and showed it. And it worked really well. And so I discovered this concept. And I also discovered a, 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 a modern doctor's like basic general use protocol for this type of sauna. So I uh, was like, cool, I'll, I'm going to build one of those. It worked for Dr. Kellogg and all these people. And it was also something that I could kind of maybe do on my own. I'm kind of a tinkerer type of person. So I built my own very bricolage, very ugly looking uh, incandescent sauna using plumbing pipe and banana clips and like che basically cheese cloth and, 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 and chicken wire and stuff. And I used it before bed, two nights before bed and my insomnia was gone and it was cured. And I was like, whoa, wow. that was really easy. And so that gave me motivation and inspiration to use it every day for about six months. And after that period, I realized, wow, I actually did have adrenal fatigue because all of a sudden uh, my brain's working better and I have more clarity and less irascibility and more patience, even with my mother and uh, more positive out attitude and just less, less irritability. And, and all those things are really qualitative improvements that uh, when I, my body was dirty, you know, when the car's dirty, you can't see anything. Once you start to clean up deeply, you resolve issues you weren't aware of because you were so, you're so toxic and basically out of touch with your body. So after six months, all the stuff resolved, including my acne on my, my torso, which is really strange. It was only on my torso. And, uh, and that inspired the formation eventually of the company. I built a few for other people and and the results were awesome i was in the middle of a rental real estate company at the time and i didn't have the emotional constitution for that i'm just kind of a nice guy and i'm not kind of a just i could didn't suit me to ask people and, and the rent and all those other aspects of it um which i didn't think about when i started that business and so this is on the side and all of a sudden these people are extremely satisfied with this sauna that i'm making calling me up crying saying how amazing and how much it transformed their lives. And I was like, whoa, I'll just do this. This is much more satisfying and maybe it's actually a business I can create. So I got my own, started my own thing. I uh, got a business loan at the end of the year. The first small business export loan a business has gotten in Missouri in, in like four decades. And that was in 2014. It's basically when the company started properly with a business loan. So now we're six years later, I have 35 full-time employees 
I'm in a big shop now. You can kind of see behind me. If you look closely, that's the factory floor. Um, a little slow right now because it's lunch, but uh, we're actually making it right here. All Everybody is right here. So we're all vertically integrated. I design it uh, with my team and we, met, we hand make it here and we fulfill it from here. So it's all made here and every aspect of the product is now undergone a lot of development and customization to bring this type of sauna technology to market where there wasn't a commercial option before. And that was also one of my original motivations was there, this is a better sauna. It heats you up faster and provides better results at a lower temperature. So it's like a, a more efficient way to do sauna. It has this light therapy stuff that we'll talk about that we all need. And uh, it all made more sense. And so I got on this journey to offer that to the world. And I think, I, I think I've been, I, I've certainly made many mistakes and screwed up things, but I'm on the right path. We are satisfying people who can't do regular sauna due to health issues. And we're becoming kind of an educational resource for people who are not aware of sauna that, hey, it actually is relevant to you too. Pretty much relevant to everybody, regardless of, of toxin profile, regardless of disease profile and like what you're dealing with. This, the, the research supports the, the, the fact that this will help you if you actually can be bothered to use it. So I made a product that uh, is really conducive to convenient, easy use. And it's as a lot of details are designed to basically maximize the attempt to trick the body into thinking it's in its natural environment. And so we can talk about that stuff too, but, but uh, it, it came from a need that I, I, I was selfish. I wanted this for myself to fix my own problems. And then when I fixed them, I, I realized how awesome this could be for other people. And, and the sauna, world is very crowded there's a lot of companies so i think it's a testament to the superior or the 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 more effective approach that we take that we've had such market success in spite of things i have 35 employees and they all make it there's like three people in the office we don't have a big marketing department we focus everything on the quality of the product and the customer's success and and yeah and we have a great option we have other things too like this photon now which is used for for spa therapy and for it, kind of uh, environmental atmospheric therapy. Uh, pretty interesting use of that. So I have mine at the desk here and I can see yours too, yep. Megan, you know, shine in there. So we use this to, to work all day long because it it actually improves the quality of light around you. It, it, just, it reverses the blue, measurable blue light from technology screens and the technology fatigue we get. It cancels out the flickering light effect of normal light sources that flicker. That, that leads to migraines and headaches and uncomfortability. It, it basically makes everything better. It's like having a, literally like having a fireplace next to you from a spectrum, from a health perspective. And that's kind of like the way, the way it is in our sauna. The big difference in the feel is, you know, you have a regular sauna in a sauna space, incandescent sauna. It's like you're doing sauna in front of the fireplace. It's a, it's a very groovy feeling. And that's what the light therapy does and how it helps you. And, in its own way. I love that. Yeah, I have both my, the photon and then I have the full sauna and I love both of them, use them every day. Brian, I would love to dig into a little bit more of what makes sauna space so different because we get a lot of questions like what's the difference of far versus near? And then I know you have the added red light and uh, that aspect of it. Could you just share a little bit more about the difference between the technologies and why you believe that this is so beneficial? Yeah, so, so sauna space is a sauna, just like other saunas. You heat up the body enough when it's resting. And if you get this like three degree, three degree temperature increase in the cells, you get all these benefits of sauna, the heat shock protein uh, responses that uh, do all the magical stuff. If you heat up the cells in the whole body by three degrees, you start sweating. And, and, then, and then you know when you're sweating passively that you've achieved that sauna result. But it's a question of how long does that take? And the, that's a big marked difference between what we do with incandescent light. It's primarily near infrared, but essentially it's a broad spectrum light source that has most of its emission in the near infrared. And when most of the emissions in the near infrared, the photons that are heating you are mostly near infrared, which are not well absorbed by water and therefore penetrate deeply into the body. So when you sit in a sauna space sauna it, naked, the light is immediately getting four inches into your body and immediately heating the water molecules like in your kidney and heating you up gently, but really efficiently. It's 
uh, in, in far infrared saunas and regular wet gym saunas, it's essentially the air heating you up. So the air has to be really hot and it takes a slow, it slowly heats you from the outside in, just like you would boil an egg in, in, in water. It's a conductive way of heating and it's not very efficient. So far infrared and gym saunas, people, you, they have to run a lot hotter and people take a lot longer to sweat in them. Uh, beyond, beyond that, just in terms of doing a sauna, what sauna space does is more efficient. It takes less time because it heats you up much more efficiently by using this penetrating near infrared light. Uh, far infrared wavelengths, which is what most of the infrared saunas are out there. They're far infrared based saunas. Those wavelengths are above 300 nanometers. They're low energy infrared and they are hundred percent absorbed by water and therefore only achieve surface heating. So the far infrared sauna, it's heating the air up. It's kind of doing some surface heating in the skin. And then that heat slowly, you know, migrates inward. Again, with the sauna space, the moment you sit in there, it's heating you up to three or four inches on the inside. So you, you that core temperature increase happens a lot faster without the need for the air to be really hot. Uh, be, uh, and, and that's just apples to apples with the sauna. Then let's add on top of that, this issue with light therapy. Light therapy is not just a, a fringe concept. It has both things that I mentioned in the beginning of this conversation. It has the ancestral wisdom. So uh, it's, we, we've lived with sunlight, the incandescent light source for millions of years and even a billion years and from a mitochondrial perspective. And ancestral humans understood this. They understood that the most beneficial part of sunlight was morning and evening, sunrise and sunset and close to those. And it's because those times of the day that you're getting more near infrared than, you're getting as much near infrared and red as you can versus the blue, ultraviolet and the blue, which is the damaging component. And so uh, the, the fact is the ancestral humans understood that. What is the modern uh, empirical observation? What are the modern studies stating when we take our microscopes and look in deep? It turns out we have mitochondria in every cell of the body. Uh, those are the energy, you know, the little batteries in the cell. They produce a lot of energy, only animals have them. It turns out that they don't just produce energy, they have a fundamental healing role in the body and a repair role. And uh, the repair and the regeneration aspect of this and the healing aspect are triggered by near infrared light. So this very narrow spectrum of light, visible red light and the high energy near infrared light. So it's about 600 to a thousand nanometer light. Uh, if, it, if, it, if it hits the mitochondrial uh, light receptor protein, it triggers this healing. And you have it in every cell of the body except red blood cells. And so it's a dose dependent thing. It was something that you got under the sun naked every day. And you got that basically healing light. Um, it's just like food. Our bodies need it and crave it. It's not enough to just get, uh, just, you know, just eat. We have a fundamental relationship with light in our bodies. And it's because we're not so much biochemical as we are bioelectric. We're electromagnetic. You know, the blood flows down the arteries via a voltage gradient. It's an electromotive force. The, the blood brain barrier is a voltage gate and every cell of the body has these little voltage gates and, and basically small fundamental uh, biological systems are all controlled by electricity. And, and, and uh, it turns out that light is kind of a form of electricity in a way, if you use the fancy word electromagnetism. So it's a really trippy concept, but basically we're like plants. Near infrared light hits us and it triggers uh, uh, important healing and biological mechanisms and actually satisfies our caloric requirement part, which is really interesting. Like you, the light feeds you. So when, when the near infrared light hits you, you produce more ATP out of the mitochondria, which is what you do when you eat sugar. So it's feeding you without sugar. It's doing all this amazing healing stuff. It's something we had uh, as a central part of our lifestyle, uh, biologically and ancestrally, and we need it. And so I say, well, let's have it. Let's have it in our sauna. And so uh, while you're doing sauna therapy, you're doing near infrared light therapy, also called photobiomodulation. And you can look this up in the research, photobiomodulation, LLLT, low level light therapy. There's like 7,000 studies in, in, the, in the public research. And we can talk about some of the benefits of it, like, like dealing with alopecia, uh, you know, I think it's really relevant for your audience and, and well, everybody. But there's fundamentally amazing benefits to using light therapy, including new research on it, use, it being used to treat COVID because of the inflammation reduction effects that you get from light therapy. 
And so I said, let's do those together in the sauna and let's not do it with a collection of technologies. Let's do it from a singular light source, the incandescent bulb, which is mimicking the sun, except there's no ultraviolet and blue. So the, the thermal light bulb spectrum of our bulb is a broad spectrum emission with lots of near infrared and a natural uh, uh, shape of a, a spectrum like you would see from the sun, except we've chopped out the ultraviolet and the blue by putting the red glass on it. So you get the full healing complement of the sunlight in its natural form with light and heat together. You don't have to deal with these problematic ultraviolet and blue issues. Uh, which there is a role for ultraviolet and blue, but it's very dose dependent. And ancestral humans understood this. So ancestral humans were not out in midday, lying at the beach with sunscreen on. That's not a natural relationship with sun. The, the, the natural relationship is a lot of exposure in the morning and the evening. And then you rest under the, the shade of the tree, you know, at midday. So uh, the more we, our relationship has become totally detached from, from light, the, the more we suffer. The highest, you know, there's so many things, but basically our modern lifestyle uh, is really nutrient depleted. And then we've surrounded ourselves with a lot of environmental stress that we have never experienced before. Electromagnetic stress from voltage, from cell phone signal, um, light stress from artificial blue light from LEDs and all digital screens, which is a huge component of macular degeneration nowadays. And there's like the highest incidence in the world now of children needing prescription eyewear under the age of five. Like it's in South Korea, it's like one in two children born. And that's re highly related to um, these unnatural modern stresses that we that we have as a, as a byproduct of all this technology we love. Um, so so I say, well, let's just do it together. And, and what's interesting about that is, okay, we got light therapy, we got heat therapy. You know, you could do that, you could get us regular, far for its sauna, and then you could get an LED light therapy product. And you could do these two therapies separately, right? So why, why do them together? Well, it turns out there's a lot of synergy between doing them together. One, one challenge with sauna therapy is it's, is it's detoxification. It's very energy intensive. It's actually a little bit stressful for the body. It's something that we need to do, but it is stressful. The light therapy supports it and makes the detoxification, makes the sauna therapy less stressful and more effective. And in doing so, broadens the access to it. If you have someone who's, you know, have a lot of comorbidities in Lyme, they have autoimmune issues, they have heat sensitivity, maybe they're dealing with body temperature regulation issues as well. Uh, they need sauna, but it, they can't seem to get in there and get over that hump to where they can handle it. And it appears from our customer reports and all of our experience with what we're doing here, over 10,000 customers that that this is a unique vehicle to do sauna because the light therapy is helping everything in addition to the light therapy doing its own stuff. So for, for those who don't know much about light therapy, it, it increases energy production and it also uh, promotes the anti-aging DNA repair. It immediately promotes inflammation reduction in the cells and the tissue. So that's a lie. A lot of people who do light therapy get immediate pain reduction in, in a joint pain and a chronic pain. Uh, but it has also um, just a lot of other like little things that it's doing. It basically is promoting healing and repair wherever it hits. So we're using light therapy to heal it, not just the skin, but the organs, the uh, neurological tissue. You can regenerate nerve cells with light therapy because you're stimulating mitochondrial regeneration, which is weird, right? You can't, you can't regenerate nerve cells, right? Well, that's what conventional medicine says, but that's not true. Uh, and you see the, the testament to that is some amazing uh, recoveries people are having with TBI and, um, and recovering from stroke and heart attack with light therapy and, and in, in healing the nerve tissue damage. And then, uh, and then on and on and on. So it's really exciting. We could talk about hours about the, the, the benefits that as they apply to certain things, but I think we should probably speak to like you know, what questions do your audience have in terms of what would be relevant? So we don't talk about things that are, you know, maybe not quite as relevant. Yeah, well, one of the questions that came up is kind of what, which part is causing the benefits? Because I think a lot of people think of the benefits of sweating, right? We're aware of like our detox pathways, but you just hit up so many more, right? The 
And I think you've said like, the, is it the red light part that helps you get into the parasympathetic state? This is something we're continuously- The sauna does, yeah, the sauna does that too. So regardless of sauna type, once it's a little bit of a sympathetic activity when you get in there, your heart rate increases, you have more blood flow, you have some more going on, but you're sitting there passive. So all of that extra energy is going towards regenerative re uh, repair issues, including, uh, you know, fixing misfolded proteins, you know, proteins are like the line workers in your body. They're at every stage, you need those guys to work right. And one of the other things sauna does is the heat shock proteins, in addition to detoxing and helping detox, fix the protein structures and make the proteins work better. So for example, the insulin receptor protein on the outside of the cell, it uh, if that gets malformed and misfolded over time, insulin doesn't cl click to it well, and you get insulin resistance, which leads to obesity. And uh, if you have someone who's obese and you just put them on the treadmill, it's hard for them to lose weight because they're so insulin resistant because their proteins are malformed. So the sauna therapy and the uh, uh, by activating the heat shock proteins actually improves the receptability of the insulin receptor protein and decreases insulin resistance and increases, um, um, you know, insulin sensitivity, which is a good, that's what you want. And so what you see here is the sauna therapy at the cellular level, correcting the hormonal system, which is a really high level thing in the body. Uh, and there's definitely a lot of overlap in these things, but for example, also, uh, the liver. So, uh, the liver is a big detox organ, right? but it also is very important for um, maintaining hormonal balance in the body. And so that's a huge reason why sauna helps your body deal with hormonal issues and correct hormonal imbalance is the body helps detox all this crap in your body and gives your liver a break so it can do its job better, which is one of its important roles is a hormonal imbalance. So through detoxification with sauna, you can correct hormonal imbalances by, by giving, again, giving the systems in the body a chance to do their job. Everybody's bodies now, nowadays, most people, they're really overwhelmed with environmental stress. Where all of us are really insulin resistant. We're becoming more and more gluten intolerant. We have a lot of aluminum in our brains due to exposures of all kinds and a lot of heavy metal exposure. And, and these are kind of tidal wave levels of toxicity that we're not biologically programmed to handle. And then if you add on top of that, some of these weird new modern stresses like blue light and also like EMF stress, electromagnetic stress, it's really, uh, it causes a logical dissonance for us that we don't actually understand the implications of this exactly. But think about it this way, ancestral human, there's a bear attacking you. You, you get into fight or flight mode and you actually respond physically with your body and you escape. And that's a natural response. And then you relax once you get into a safe place, right? Um, that the bear is an environmental stress. So, but what if the bear is not a bear? What if the bear is something invisible like electromagnetism? So your body's getting an, an environmental stress and uh, stimulus from the environment. And so the body starts going into sympathetic fight or flight, sympathetic dominance and, and uh, adrenaline starts pumping, cortisol levels go up as if you need to respond to this, this, this thing that's attacking you or endangering your life, but there's nothing there. So your, your, log your conscious brain, your higher brain is overriding your instinct and saying, no, don't worry about it. There's nothing there. Just carry on with your life. But the, but the hormonal and different uh, nervous system responses are still happening. But then you're, you're, you have this logical dissonance basically that's going on, cognitive dissonance between the conscious brain and the instinctive autonomic uh, responses that you're getting. And I think that creates a huge problem in the body. Basically the body, your, your, your brain is telling your body, don't worry about that stress, but your body is trying to respond to it. Cause that's the only thing it knows how to do. And the result of that I speculate is that people are stuck in fight or flight all day long. They're stuck in this stressful state and ancestral humans were very briefly in that state because we're, our bodies can't sustain it. It's like being in red level alert 24 hours a day. And it just breaks us down really quickly. And we start to get, I would argue, some of these weird diseases of civilization that um, Stone Age era cultures don't deal with. Other than, than dying of you know exposure or trauma wounds, if you meet someone who's 70 years old in some of these still existing Stone Age cultures, 
they have zero autoimmune, zero hypertension, zero, uh, uh, you know, cardiovascular issues. Uh, and I, I would argue a, a very minimal amount of like all these other weird things that we suffer from nowadays, autoimmune and, and other stuff. So uh, it's really relevant for everybody nowadays, just as general wellness, general preventative, pre preventative health, in addition to be really relevant in this new era of pandemic, supposedly, where we where people are concerned with immunity, this is the most powerful way to, to boost your immunity directly and immediately and safely and at home. And then all these other things too, uh, that I think relate to, um, you know, again, what we were going to talk about, like menopause and premenopausal stuff, you know, like, uh, I mean, what's the number one, there's a lot of different complaints people have, I know, I, I know mood swings is an issue. And, and depression and anxiety and also trouble sleeping. And those are things that are directly uh, corrected by, by, by this, uh, using it at home. Uh, and we have a lot of stories from our customers on depression, on, on, on reducing anxiety and bringing mental clarity, mental focus, just as my personal story and, and how I covered that. We have so many customers that are uh, you know, achieving you know, improving, improving their situation in those regards. Yeah, the majority of the women that we work with, Brian, are dealing with ex often excess estrogen. They've got high inflammation, excess estrogen is dealing to all sorts of um, different symptoms, PMS symptoms, heavy periods, just uh, painful periods, acne, right, different things like that. And I know I ended up buying the sauna because I was dealing with um, mold in my home. So I mm. was thinking detoxification, right? That was my main focus. And I mean, in the end, I ended up, you know, with, with so much more than that, but that itself had then really tanked my estrogen. So then using the sauna every day has, you know, shifted my ability to detox. I was not able to sweat at all when I first got it. And anytime I had tried to go into just sauna, right? Like uh, somewhere where, you know, go in and purchase a sauna session, I, it was painful because right? yeah. I couldn't sweat. So, so going really slowly, this is the first time. And now I go in there and I sweat right away. And it's, it just, over time, it just increased. And I, I felt so much better. So I know a lot of people have had that same experience of um, not being able to sweat, but then going slowly. And now I can naturally sweat all the time. Yeah, you've corrected your body's homeostasis. So kind of when you're toxic, your body wants to stay there. And uh, one of those reasons is because the body hides toxins in, in fat tissue, in adipose tissue. And so if you want to lose unwanted fat and lose weight, um, you are in, you have a detoxification component that's associated with that that's really important to deal with. So it's much, I would argue, less stressful and safer to do it in a sauna versus trying to do it only in the gym. If it's the choice between the gym and the sauna, it needs to be the sauna. And then if you, but if you can do both, that's amazing. You know, you do want to be doing some vigorous exercise, but it, I would argue in the in nowadays with all the disease and things we're dealing with. Uh, that detox session and the regenerative aspects of that session and the de-stressing aspect of that session of the sauna session are arguably even more important than getting a workout in. Well, um, I had never heard it uh, said that way before, Brian, until I was listening to you in another interview, but the idea of passive sweating versus sweating on a treadmill. Can you talk about how that, how it's a different effect on the body? Because I was thinking sweating is sweating, whether I run and sweat or whether I'm in the sauna or sweat, but can you tell the benefits of the passive sweating? Yeah, the, the difference is when you're in sympathetic dominance, when you're on the treadmill, your fight or flight state, you're using all of the increased energy you get from your body kicking into that special high stress nervous state. All that energy is being used for locomotion to move. And all of the blood flow in your body is basically going to your blood, lungs, and muscles. And, and your body is de-emphasizing any non-necessary allocations of energy or resources at all because of that environmental stress or, or just that step physical activity that you're doing. When you sweat passively, uh, it is a very similar experience from a blood circulation perspective. I forget what it is. I, I should have it quoted, but uh, 
basically a 20 or 30 minute sauna session is equivalent to like a 70 to 100 kilowatt workout. So you're, wow. you get all the benefits of the, of the, of the exercise, more, most of the benefits of the exercise in terms of the, the, you know, you get a, a increased production of growth hormone naturally, increased blood circulation, increased tissue oxygenation. You have, um, you know, a regenerative and growth effects that occur just like in an exercise. But since your body's not uh, needing to move, it has all this energy and resources and it does what it would normally do in that case, which is when you're in parasympathetic, you're in rest and digest. Well, rest and digest is rest and digest and heal. So when you're passively sweating, your body's using all that extra energy and, and not to mention the increased extra energy you get from the light therapy for detox, for repair, for restructuring, for regeneration. And that process means that you're you know, uh, the, the top, the detox is much more effective. So the, if you measure the, um, the synthetic chemicals that are coming out of the sweat and the heavy metals are coming out of sweat, they're much higher in, the, in sauna sweat than treadmill sweat. It's not about how much you sweat. It's about the content of the, the toxins in there. And there is some controversy there. You can read an article I wrote, if you want, for the, I wrote for the Nutri Nutritional Therapy Association, NTA. And I kind of, dive deep onto this subject. But but basically, uh, when you sweat passively, you're engaging in healing and repair and, and detox is a huge component of that. And when you're sweating, uh, when you're on the treadmill and you're or you're working really hard, you're mostly sweating to cool off. Um, you, these these amazing cellular uh, regenerative benefits are kind of throttled for the sake of the body needs to allocate all of that energy and resources to, to motion, to locomotion. So very different uh, uh, experience. And, and I argue if you, don't, if you don't have both in your life, the more important one is the sauna because you need that de-stress. Uh, stress is a, pretty much the number one source of disease. And I know it's a problem with, with everyone, women, men, everybody. We have too much stress in our lives. We need a daily de-stressing de -stressing component and, and some of that is physiological, like detox, getting toxin stress off your body. But a lot of it's in here, in the nervous, in, in the brain, and it's uh, the more high level aspects of the body. We wanna de-stress psychologically too. And to do that, we need to put the body into this healing state and stay in there for a while. And I ideally have no distractions, no TV, no kids coming in and interrupting you. And, and, and that, what's cool is in the sauna space session on top of all these other things, that is your opportunity to take 10, 20 minutes to yourself. And that we don't do nowadays. And that is a, also an issue. Ancestral humans sat in, in quietude alone for extended periods of time. And that's a healthy thing. Um, the, the, the modern life nowadays where you don't have any break from anybody ever, is not something we're designed to handle. It, 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 it's, it's damaging to us slowly to, and to our health and to our sanity for sure. And so uh, you, you do need that time to yourself. So do that, you know, whilst in the sauna and hopefully, you know, one day if you, if you have a, we offer this EMF shield basically for our sauna and that uh, is just furthering this perfect environment in which you get this maximal healing. Um, you know, if you can protect yourself from the electromagnetic stress. So we do offer that option for people who are interested in that. And I think that's the best thing you can do is, is, is only in there is it the first time where you don't have any environmental stress on your body and, and you can maximally benefit from these, these healing therapies, whether it's the deprivation therapy or the light therapy or the detox therapy or the grounding therapy, uh, because our sauna mat is grounded. It's basically a grounding mat. So, um, yeah. And there's something magical about that canvas being, you know, it's not very thick, but somehow my kids do not bother me in there. My four-year-old knows mom's in the sauna. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an important design difference, I think, that we do versus other people. We have a traveling fortune teller tent type sauna. It looks like a portable tent. It is unusual looking, um, but it's also, uh, there's an important piece to being closed up in there, not having a window. 
you go in there and it's very kind of ancestral natural vibes in in the in the natural materials around you but there's also no blue light coming in from outside and hopefully no no nothing for your eyes to be stimulated by either it's just you're surrounded by this healing thing so that's why we don't have any windows and and i discourage people from sitting in saunas that have windows where you have this view back out into the stressful world um so yeah it's uh it's really uh it's something you have to just try and in general i recommend just any type of sauna for anybody i think what we do here is better uh for some of the reasons we've discussed but any sauna is good and if you can't afford anything and you're just at home you can kind of do a sauna by filling up the bath with the hottest water possible and getting in it and by the time the water is lukewarm you will have sweated you'll have sweat um, decently and and that's something you can do right now uh, and if you have that with some zinc and some vitamin d and some vitamin c um, this corona thing shouldn't, shouldn't be no problem for you either <laughs> I uh, want to talk a little bit more about EMFs, Brian, because that's been a, it's a lot of concern. Of course, we talked about how that can be linked with hormonal imbalances to begin with. So a lot, a lot of the women coming to us are wanting to avoid that and not add that in with a sauna. The reason that Alex, Dr. Alex and I ended up purchasing sauna space is we we're at a conference and you were there. We got to meet you and um we, I don't do well with the sounds and the light and the conference being in a big conference hall. It, I, I don't feel well, even after like an hour. So came over, we're going to test out your saunas. And when I went in the sauna that had the Faraday shield, the EMF shield, it was like, like you could feel the difference in there. It was just peaceful and calm. And you also had your I guess it was an EMF reader or you had a um, device. The with meter, it, yeah. The meter to actually read. So I go in, measure on, on the outside and it's, you know, through the roof. I don't know the numbers and I go in and it was zero. So after that, I was sold. I still don't have the cover, but that's definitely on the list for later. But um, without that, can you explain a little bit more about the technology and how you're not introducing extra um, EMFs and the importance of that? Yeah, the the... EMF is not the only thing in life. Let's not uh, uh, obsess over it uh, to uh, to the extent that we you know singularly focus on it. But it's definitely it's a non-native form of environmental stress that we've created for technology, you know, for quality of life reasons. But it's not something we ever had before, and it does have a biological impact on us. And what we're finding out is that man-made sources of EMF have an adverse biological impact for the most part. There's a few therapies out there like what we do here, where basically we created this bulb that shines a spectrum of light that's absorbed by the body and there's an electromagnetism component to that. Um, there are certain PEMF products, you know, the uh, microcurrent products that are using uh, very controlled uh, uh, manifestations of electromagnetism produce healing and those things work really well just like our what we do here is really kick you know doing really well but uh it's the devil is in the details and it turns out that things that we weren't evolved to benefit from electromagnetically uh what they do is they disrupt the electrical systems in our body and that's why i was mentioning that before we are more fundamentally quantum mechanically like bioelectric than we are chemical we're, we're more adversely affected by electromagnetism in terms of our body working right or not than even chemical exposure. And people understand chemical exposure. You know, you're not going to drink uh, Roundup necessarily. You know that's bad for you. That's a that's an obvious chemical exposure. EMFs are not as obvious, but they definitely affect us. Basically, biologically, Dr. Martin Paul's research, which you can look him up, P-A-L-L, -L, Dr. Martin Paul has determined that that the, the cell phone signal hits your cell and opens your calcium channels because they're, they're called voltage-gated calcium ion channels. Calcium floods into the cell, which causes a lot of free radicals to be produced, way too much energy is produced, and it leads to cell death, apoptosis. So when, when the cell phone hits your cells, it causes this huge calcium flood 
which also disrupts what's called calcium signaling, a fundamental communication system in every cell of the body. This is like primordial stuff. And it's screwing, it's screwing with a, a fundamental voltage system in your body. So when that's the biological uh, impact. Now the question is, does that result in disease? Is there any disease that's associated with that? Because we know that definitely the even the low powered um, cell phone signal has this biological effect. Where previously the telecom industry and what was generally accepted was if the wattage of the signal was not strong enough to heat your tissue up, literally heat you up, then it's totally safe. And what we're finding out now that is that it's like it takes 7 million times less voltage from a microwave signal to trigger this uh, voltage gated effect in your body than it does to heat the water. What I'm saying is that the telecom industry safety standard is 7 million times uh, uh, higher uh, in terms of the maximum exposure you're supposed to get than, than what it actually what actually adversely affects our bodies. We are really sensitive. The voltage gated calcium ion channels are really sensitive to a little bit of electricity, even though there's no heating going on at all because it's it's just a cell phone signal. So uh, all that to say that there's an issue here. And so then you need to take the next step. Is there a tie into disease? Are we linking this to disease? Are we seeing uh, maldevelopment occur in terms of disease? And the answer is yes. We're seeing a lot of associations now with heart, uh, heart, with heart attacks and heart disease, with cancer, depression, um, uh, anxiety, um, and, and many other things due to this. And this is like a cumulative exposure. It's just like the, it's just like that chemical. If you drink pesticides, you know, if if you drink the pesticide, it maybe kill you because you get such a acute exposure. If you just have a little bit each day because it's in your groundwater, it slowly causes damage through toxic exposure, deterioration in your body, and you get one of these other diseases we we just talked about, you know, these the thousand things that, you know, this this disease, or you get psoriasis, or you get autoimmune, or uh, you start having Crohn's, or PCOS, or all these other things. And um, um, the fact of the matter is EMF is gonna be a part of this. It's it's kind of the new silent spring. It'll be, there'll be more, mainstream awareness, I think in 20 or 30 years. Plus we're adding so much new EMF to our lives that it, we are kind of reaching a breaking point where before we could kind of handle it. And now it's getting to a point people can't handle it with the introduction of the new cell phone technology, 5G. Um, it's, just, it's just a lot more frequencies and a lot more wattage flying through the air. And the other aspect that's really challenging about EMF versus say a chemical exposure is you can't escape it. You could control your diet, eat organic food, have a little garden. You could really minimize your exposure to chemicals and really improve your, your nutrient uh, consumption, but you can't ever escape the EMF. Where can you not get a cell phone signal now? And, and, and where can you go in anywhere where you actually can't hop on a Wi-Fi signal? Even when you go camping, you can get a cell phone signal. So that means that you're not in a environmental stress-free situation anymore. And so we never get a break from this. It's a small cumulative stress, but it's 24 hours a day. We never get a break from it. It's constantly wearing us down. Um, when you go inside the, the, the Faraday, that's the first time you had a break from it. And it's not just you're getting a break from that stress, that EMF stress in the half hour you're in the, the Faraday sauna. You're allowing the body to conduct these therapeutic regenerative uh um, you know, things that it wants to do without having the stress load on it. It's like you trying to uh, run 10 miles with a 50 pound back on your backpack on you versus with no added weight. It's you will go farther and you will achieve more because you don't have that stress load on your on your body. It's a it's kind of a crude analogy, but that's what's going on. Um, and so uh, it turns out that our natural body voltage is really low. And that's why when you walk in the sauna, when you walk in our sauna in the Faraday, you were at the show, you don't touch anything metallic. If you remember, you have the bamboo floor, the organic canvas walls and stuff and the wood poles. And there's nothing uh, directly connecting you to ground. It's, it's basically this grounded Faraday cage. It's this, it's this uh, protective bubble you walked in. When you walk in that protective bubble, there's not all this man-made voltage and EMF attacking you and your body goes back to what it wants to be, which is a very low voltage. And it happens really quickly. If you remember, we showed it the meter, 
you can see some of this on our Instagram live too. We have a lot of demos on there now, but it, it's immediate. Your body immediately in a half a second returns to a naturally really low body voltage. So that's where it wants to be. And you're, we're stressing it out by keeping it up high all the time. And so one of the most important things you can do is have electromagnetic protection, protection from man-made EMF when you're trying to do your healing therapy, which, which is what we're trying to do in the sauna. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the material is unfortunately expensive to make. Uh, the current generation Faraday material we have is really cool. It's 35% silver by, uh, by, by yardage and uh, the rest is organic cotton. So we've achieved this world's first, I think, with making a machine washable uh, shielding material that's uh, wow. latest generation in shielding effectiveness. Have some test results coming out soon for that. Should be pretty cool. But it does take a lot of silver. This material is expensive to make. So, uh, so we offer our basic sauna option without that. And then you can add in that layer uh, if you want. Uh, and that's what I recommend most people do who, to, just like you, you know, you're, you want to do sauna, you've heard about it a lot, but your initial experiences maybe were mediocre, you're skeptical. So start out with the basic sauna and then understand that this stuff is amazing. And, and certainly you can add that in later. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, it's not something to poop ha and it's also not something to accept uh, as like the only thing that's going on. It's just important to have an awareness that we want to minimize our exposure to man-made electromagnetism when and where we can. So in an ideal world, all of our products would have, would be shielded for EMF. Mm -hmm. uh, but to kind of go to full circle, go back to what you originally asked me, our products don't contribute any EMF to the situation. They actually reduce the EMF. And that's because we've shielded everything. And if I, I'll just show you this, maybe I can pull this in real quick. Let's see if I can keep this like this. So this is our photon and I can't quite show you all of it, but basically the, the lamp guard is a grounded Faraday cage. The handle's grounded, uh, all the metal's grounded. And then inside there's all this shielding material to prevent any voltage from escaping. And we use a shielded power cord. And when you do all of that, we can show you and you can see it on our website with meters and stuff that there's no EMF coming from the electronic device that's influencing us. And so uh, most of the other sauna companies are not doing this. And it's silly, they should be doing it, but uh, they don't consider it an important thing there. I guess they're not doing it. We're doing that and that's, we made a name for ourselves. And uh, I you know, encourage everybody out there to measure it themselves. We've totally locked it down by using ground and metal technology to, to prevent any e electric field and, and kind of magnetic field stuff from coming and hitting the user. That's first of all unique in the sauna world. And then we said, well, let's take it up a, a notch beyond just not contributing any EMF, can, can we make a solution for the environmental EMF in the user's area, in their, in their environment, in their, in their home? And that first solution is the grounding mat on the Luminati. So the basic sauna has a grounding mat that gives you those grounding benefits and protects you from almost all of the wired EMF from electricity, the low frequency voltage it's called. Uh, but it doesn't protect you from that wireless data in the air. To have that, you have to have the full six-sided shield. So uh, we're trying to offer solutions for this and uh, we're the only ones doing it. And I think it's really important at the end of the day, you know, that's that feeling you get that when you step inside of a grounded Faraday cage where you have no EMF on your body for the first time ever. And then also it's got the light in there, you know, that feels amazing. It feels good. It's like, how would you describe, how did you describe it? I mean, I, I would describe it as, as being really quiet to the senses. It was it's peaceful. Very, it's very quiet and peaceful in a, almost like a shocking way, like it's astounding. And that's because we don't, uh, you just don't have an opportunity to be in such a safe, peaceful, protected environment anymore. So Very that's true. the difference we do. And uh, you know, you can read more about it more on the, on the site, but definitely unique in the sauna world. And uh, I think that EMF protection is also an important accommodation for people who are uh, have multiple chemical sensitivity or electro hypersensitive people, people who are more sensitive to EMF or just more sensitive to things, protecting from them from man-made EMF while they're doing their healing therapy is, is not just important, but I think it's essential for some of these people to, again, make it possible for them to get in there and do the sauna. 
it's the sauna part that's stressful. And so the adding in the light therapy and then addressing EMF issues from the product and protecting them from environmental EMF makes this like uniquely amazing multifactorial healing machine. It's like doing so many things, you know, when it's in there and, and it becomes again, a, a, a vehicle for access for people. The most, the most stressed out people I've ever met are people who deal with MS and, and cancer in terms of physical weakness and uh, sensitivity to so many things. And I feel we've, we've uh, really been successful in, in developing a, a product that, that those types of people can, can handle. Um, and we see that in our customer reviews and also just out there, our, our products used at the Gerson clinic in Mexico. It's a world famous alternative cancer treatment clinic. We're the only sauna that's there. Um, and like Dr. Terry Walls, if you're familiar, the the Walls protocol approach and her MS community, they have so many amazing stories of success with our product. And those are people that actually were told not to use sauna because they can't handle it. Um, and then Brian, the only people not to use, I had on my list here, how about pregnant and breastfeeding moms? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point to make. Uh, pregnant women are basically not allowed to do anything nowadays. Uh, we don't, we don't have any research on, on basically long-term effects of heating the fetus up, uh, with, uh, and, and the issue is you don't want to inordinately create any inflammation with a, a growing embryo and a growing fetus. So you want to do things that or, you know, avoiding inflammation in, uh, in all ways. Having said that, uh, you can still use it for five or 10 minutes at a time. Uh, you can pop in and use it briefly. If you're, uh, it's, it's a comfort level thing, but definitely it, you could still use the photon. If you're a pregnant pr person, you can use a photon on your legs and your head to help you with stress levels and anxiety and stuff. Um, and then it's also contraindicated for very young children. Um, and then uh, that's basically it. Uh, other other folks, some folks will need supervision if they're extremely weak. And and then if you're taking prescription drugs, you need to consult your healthcare provider before using the product. You know, we're not healthcare providers, even though we, we know a lot. Um, and I'm just a curious guy, so I, I research it a lot. You know, definitely need to consult with your healthcare provider. But uh, pretty much everybody from very young age to 110 years old, male, female of any type can use this. And if you have heat sensitivity issues or weakness issues, you can titrate up to using the four bulbs. You can start out using one or two bulbs and having very short sessions to slowly build into a use of this. And we have many customers that have to do it that way. That's why we, we offer a really long um, kind of product trial. Sometimes it takes people a while to figure things out, but but essentially it's, it's usable by almost everybody. Even uh, I, I take my son in who's, and he's eight, almost nine. And then my other son is almost four. And I actually take my four-year-old in there too with me uh, for about five to eight minutes while I'm doing my session. So I supervise him and, and uh, that's okay too. That's a choice I make as a parent and uh, it's amazing for them. Every, you know, everybody needs, even little kids are dealing with toxic loads nowadays that nobody, that we just are not designed to handle. Right. Brian, can you explain the best way to use the photon? So the photon is the single standalone light. Is that, I know someone had asked about eczema or is that spot treating? So what, what would be the best way? Yeah. To use that? Yeah. So primary use of, of the photon is targeted therapy, spot spot therapy for any spot issue. It could be eczema on the skin, it could be headaches in the head, it could be um, women or men with thyroid issues. Um, use it on the, the neck for 10 minutes. Uh, really anything that you can think of that's a local symptom, you can use it for that spot therapy, uh, 12 to 24 inches away, and you do it about five or 10 minutes at a time. If you're doing the head or the neck, you can do 20 or 30 minutes at a time if you're doing any other part of the body. And what's cool about that is you can do that throughout the day. So if I'm doing, if I have uh, anxiety issues or, or mood issues, I'll use it just for 10 minutes on my head like this. And I'll do that 
at least four or five times in the day. And you get a lot of benefit, a lot of usage out of it. And it's, and they're like short uh, or medic stress treatments. So it's a short therapy and then let the body do some healing much better to have lots of, of higher frequency of shorter duration sessions than the, than the opposite. Same thing with the sauna, three sessions a week of, of 20 minutes is much better than one, one hour session a week. Same thing with the photon. So the primary use of it is that spot therapy for whatever and anything and everything you can think of. Uh, if you have gut issues, if you have uh, leaky gut issues and inflammation in the gut, put it on the gut, do the same thing there. But that primary use is just one use. That's the spot therapy use. The other use scenario is, is for environmental or atmospheric therapy, I'm calling it. It improves the, it, it makes the indoor lighting environment more naturalistic in your, uh, wherever you are, like me right here in the office. This, the, the, the non-flickering uh, red and near-fred only photons from this bulb, from this device are number one, canceling out the measurable blue light from my screen. So I have less blue light that's being, that is hitting my blue light receptors in my, my eyes and my, my body. And it also, if you measure with a um, pulsing light meter, it reduces measurable flickering effects. So the degree of flickering light from technology, all of these LEDs flicker, all of uh, uh, the lights and also all of our digital screens. Um, so it, it, it basically makes a environment, your indoor environment more conducive to humans. It makes it a happier place uh, where I don't think anyone can argue that working at the computer is stressful. And most people have to do it, especially in the modern era with everybody working at home, you know, through Zoom, we have to use our computers more than ever to survive. And so we need to, uh, you know, what can we do to de-stress that and make that more, more efficient, more manageable from a biological perspective. And the photon light does that in those two ways. So the environmental use is just to have it on next to you, not directly targeting you. It could even be like tilted up. It's just in the vicinity, like washing this bubble of volume of space with these healthy photons. And so from a light perspective, it makes things awesome. So in addition to using it all day for computer work or anytime you're indoors, as a, as a lighting uh, source, as an, as a, you know, a mood therapy thing after dark, you don't want to get blue light, but we want to hang out with our family right after dark, especially in the winter. So have this on instead. And so you have non flickering blue light, free light that doesn't mess with your circadian rhythm. And it is enough light to hang out and have dinner and have a conversation and even read with, and it, it, it satisfied the need for light after dark in the ancestral way. What did ancestral humans have after dark? They fire. had the bonfire, <laughs> you know, the fire. And so that's like that. We've actually, there's an evolutionary argument that we are naturally attuned now by having, so having fire for, you know, whatever, how many hundreds of thousands of years or whatever, that we've evolved to, to, to desire it, desire red, basically a bonfire spectrum low, in our view, in our, in our field of view after dark, because that's what a campfire is. And so just having the photon at night, it's something that is ancestrally pleasing and, and you'll like it. So think of it that way. Wouldn't you love to have a fireplace next to you all day long, all the time, especially now in the winter. So that's what the photon does. It's an electric fireplace, but a real one in terms of the right spectrum, the stimulating things of the fireplace and not one of those funny you seen those LED fireplaces that are like fake, yeah. you know, they have fake flames. So that's not what I mean. I mean, spectrally, the reason the fireplace and the bonfire feel good is that even though it's a low temperature incandescent light source, it still stimulates your mitochondria. And so when you feel good in front of the fireplace, a part of it is the light therapy makes you feel happy. It's not just the heat that feels good. The actual light coming off is making you feel good with these mitochondrial effects. So, so uh, even though that's not the spot therapy use, that's this environmental light therapy use at home, it's actually more being used for that than the spot therapy now, I think, in, in the general public. because, And especially for people who don't understand any of this and they're really skeptical of it, it's a great way to start. Try out this photon, just have it sitting next to you, just to start out. And then use it as a little spot therapy for those little problem areas you have.
whether it's joint and, and auto, maybe it's autoimmune related to neuropathies in the limbs, maybe you, it's diabetic edema issues in the legs, um, just chronic pain in the joint, or it's just mood issues and use it on the head and the gut. Um, Dr. Mercola, for example, uses it to, uh, and Dr. Pompa too, who uses it, they talk about using it on the back of the head for five minutes before bed to promote lymph drainage. Really? Uh, which is another thing that it's, so, you know, it, it's awesome. Remember I mentioned at the beginning, use a sauna before bed if you have a lot of sleep issues, like that was my solution. Uh, but just using the photon a little bit, it kind of kicks your body into the ready state for sleep. And especially if you're having an irregular relationship with light, uh, i.e. you watch TV after dark, you look at your phone after dark and everybody does, me too. And so it's kind of a way to trick your body, use a photon to trick your body into like correcting that uh, un abnormal blue light exposure after dark and remind it, oh, it's time to relax and, and go to bed. Oh, I um, love that. Yeah, those are the main uses, basically. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, I have one last question from our listeners, Brian, and they are curious about um, I guess basically their eyes and their head. So people are wondering, do you need protective eyewear? And then someone also mentioned that they heard you shouldn't have your head in an infrared sauna, you know, the blanket, like the ones where your head's out. So yeah, uh, yeah. So two different questions. Uh, let me answer the second question first. That's, uh, sure. that's a pretty straightforward answer. You, there are some uh, you know, healthcare providers out there that don't recommend heating up the head due to some, some symptom or some disease that they diagnose. Uh, I've heard that many times. What I say to that is, uh, what I said also earlier, you have a lot of tick toxicity in your head. Most of people's aluminum toxicity is in the brain. Uh, and if you can think about uh, the brain being such an important part of your body, you want to put, have healing there too. You have mitochondria in every cell of the brain. And all of the, you know, the base of the spine and all this stuff, and not to mention your eyes, you have a lot of benefit that can be had by exposing this, the head to near infrared light. And then additionally, you absolutely have toxicity issues in your head. If you have it anywhere else in your body, you have it in your head, whether it's aluminum or, or other heavy metals, uh, also uh, glyphosate, you know, Roundup. Um, um, and, and so from a general perspective, I would say you would want to promote healing in those areas too. The, they're, they're connected to the body. You know, why would you want to just detox your arm and, and, and your liver and then not worry about anything else? You want to holistically address all aspects of the body. So what we, I say is try, you know, if you're interested in us, try it out anyway. And if you do have issues with directly heating the head, you can turn the top light off. You know, you, you have that configurability that you can change the intensity level. So uh, we have, for those of you out there who've heard that, or maybe your healthcare provider is telling you that directly, we have a lot of customers like that who've said that, been skeptical, and, and use the approach that I've described and had amazing success with our product. The fact is you need, you need this healing and this detox stuff in every part of your body, including your head. Um, and, 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 and again, we've had many people who said we're scared of heating up their head and they've had great success with our product. So in the end, I think you need it. It's a question of like doing it slowly and carefully. So um, in regards to the first question, it's uh, there's arguments on both sides. So you have mitochondria in your eyes, your ocular tissue benefits from stimulation from near infrared light. Absolutely. 43% uh, of sunlight is near infrared. The largest chunk of the sunlight we got every day for millions of years and still do is primarily near infrared. And so we have these systems that evolve to benefit from that. And we've talked about mitochondria a lot. That's the primary system we're talking about, this light therapy mitochondrial stuff. But there are other benefits to near infrared light. Uh, near infrared light increases water nutrient transfer velocity. It's a fancy way of saying near infrared light helps the eyes deliver nutrients better, especially to the photoreceptor cells that don't have direct blood supply. Water is the only carrier of nutrients from the blood vessel to those photoreceptors that are really hungry on the back of the retina. So there's a clear evolutionary argument that the only reason we've developed these eyes 
these overdeveloped light receptors is because we've had that daily dose of near infrared to make sure the nu nutrients are getting there and, and working right. So you definitely need this in your eyes. It's then a question of, well, how much is too much? And with all things, too much can be a bad thing. If you worked out too much of the treadmill, you will uh, collapse in heat exhaustion, you know, or the sun. Uh, the same thing with a sauna. You wouldn't, you're not doing a sauna forever. We have a strict recommendation. You're doing the sauna for 20 minutes and then letting the body heal. You don't want to overdo that. It's called hermetic stress. So you have a maximum benefit to a therapy at a certain duration. And then the benefit declines if you continue to do that. So it's the same thing with the light from the sun, even ultraviolet light. Everything is dose dependent. So we want to get the right dose and not too much, not too little. So as far as the eye goes, the, uh, the thermalite bulbs that, that we make and the spectrum the, is an incandescent spectrum, very close to sunlight in power level. It's, so it's not really high wattage, really high power like a laser beam or even LED light therapy uh, because it's a different technology and it produces such a high wattage at, a, at like a five or 10 nanometer peak point. It, you do those therapies for very short periods of time. If you use a red LED light therapy product, you do it for like eight minutes, five or eight minutes. And, and because the, the wattage is so high, the intensity level of the thermal light of what we do at sauna space is low, which is what the sun is, a low natural dose. Um, so what am I getting at? Um, I think that you need the light and in your eyes and you need a natural dose of it, which is what we deliver. Um, but if you're concerned with eye exposure, then you can cover that up. Just keep in mind that a natural, like a, a normal eyeglasses don't block infrared light. Your best bet is to sort of buy in like some kind of laboratory eyeglasses is just use clothing. You can use clothing, a sleep mask, a towel, any kind of dark fabric will block uh, the infrared light from going into your eyes. I think that you need it. And there's a clear evolutionary argument that you need it. But if you have eye exposure issues, if you have light sensitivity issues and the light hurts, I've, we've had customers like that initially, they, they use a sleep mask or a towel and slowly build up to a point where they can handle it. Like I remember one uh, customer who was so sensitive to sunlight, they hadn't been out in the sun for 10 years for more than like a minute because they're, it would be extremely painful for them. And using our product initially, I remember that he would cover his eyes basically. And after uh, two or three months of use, he was able to go out in the sun for the first time in like a decade. And, and I remember him, you know, that was really transformative experience right for him. So you, you do need it, but it's, uh, if you don't feel comfortable having your eyes exposed, just cover it up. Uh, Dr. Mercola will say, stare right into the filaments. It's actually good. Dr. Cruz probably would say something like that. I don't know exactly, but, um, uh, you know, other physicians recommend not directly staring at the bulbs, but, um, just being in there, being relaxed and, uh, and that's okay too. Having said that your eyelids don't prevent any near infrared light from going in at all. Like the near infrared light goes right through your eyelids and, and you know, the tissue penetration is really deep and, so, and still it gets stopped by a bunch of, uh, you know, like bone tissue is harder to go through, but uh, you, you need it. So uh, you can wear eye protection if you want to. And that's, uh, if you feel uncomfortable, wear the eye protection. Uh, the product is very safe if you use it according to the, the recommended protocol. So if you use it for 20 minutes or even 30 minutes or even up to an hour, you're getting a nice ancestral dose of light therapy, but not too much. And, and, and your body's immediately using that stimulus for this, this healing stuff and supporting the detox and the sauna. Um, but if you feel uncomfortable, uh, then, you know, you can wear any kind of eyeglasses you want. Uh, it's just like with this, uh, again, it's dose dependent. So if we have too much, if you look at the literature and you start reading or people, their criticisms of, of sauna space or near infrared sauna or near infrared light therapy in general, one of the criticisms is uh, photo aging that, that can occur like too much near infrared light causes damage. But that's the same case with everything else. If you look at the research, 7,000 light therapy studies, you see that 
it's an hormetic stress uh, situation. If you have too much near infrared light for too long, it causes, uh, you know, it, it basically heats the cell up. It causes, it's too much. So it can cause damage. If you don't have enough dosage, if your wattage near infrared light is too low, you don't get any stimulation. It doesn't trigger a mitochondrial response. So you, you want a sweet spot. And I think the sweet spot is what we got in nature. So we deliver that natural dose in, and, and you're fine. But you can I, wear protective eyewear if you need to. I have a small article on this that you can read to on the website. Okay. Yeah. I love how much of the ancestral piece you've brought into this, Brian. It's like every part of it's so thought out. So that's very, very cool. Um, yeah. I didn't realize it until recently that what I've been trying to do for seven years is create this perfect biohack, this basically this perfect trick where you're perfectly tricking the body into thinking it's back there in its ancestral context. And it, it really loves it. It feels good. Um, I would say, you know what I heard recently from one of my customers, he was like, you know, in the Faraday, because he had the regular sauna for a long time and he just upgraded recently to the Faraday. And he was like, he was like, dude, you know, what's different. I, I feel like I can finally feel and experience the, the healing, uh, you know, the, the stimulating therapeutic benefits from the light and the heat, like much better not having that EMF on my body. Hmm. I thought that was cool to, to hear, but that's, that, that's true. Uh, and, and, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, just do something for yourself. You know, I made my own seven years ago. We, we make a really awesome turnkey product that takes care of a lot of negligent design issues and safety issues and other issues that you need in a good product. But, um, you know, wherever you are and whatever situation you're in, you, you should really try this out. You'll find that uh, most people find it's something that they've been missing for a long time. Light, like this light, this type of light, incandescent light. And then, and then with sauna, you just, people are, people are, people need to consider sauna as a first response. It's a higher benefit and lower risk option than pretty much any pharmacological thing out there. And you still have those resources. You still have drugs and surgery and chemo if you, if you need it, it's there, it's waiting for you. But try this out first because uh, we think it's, it's more effective and, and the risks are just a lot lower, you know, in general. And, and with this, this panoply of benefits you get by using this one product, it's really, you know, I think a no brainer, um, at least, at least it is to me anyway. Amazing. We will put the link to your website in the show notes and they go find you on Instagram, sauna space, correct? Yeah. Sauna space on Instagram, sauna.space. Um, and we have a lot of our, on our IGTV now, if you want to watch content, some interviews, but also cool stuff where we measure the EMF and show you how to use a grounded voltmeter and all kinds of weird technical science stuff. We love it. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. This has been incredibly eye-opening today. So I appreciate you being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, we've talked about a lot of cool stuff. Also, uh, real, I want to give a real quick plug. Um, yeah. Sauna Space now offers our sauna in five new colors. So Ooh. check it out. We've got a very special hand-dyed turmeric option now. It's like crazy. It's the fabrics dyed with turmeric. Uh, anyway, it's, it just came out, so we're really proud of it. Uh, super cool looking for the holiday season. That's exciting. I'll go to check that out and put the Faraday is going to go on my Christmas list. Cool, Megan. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm grateful to be able to speak to you and, and everybody else out there. All right. Thanks for being here. Take care. Thanks for coming out to hang with us on the podcast. It is our goal to transform the way women are treated in healthcare. And we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. We have a lofty goal of 1 million downloads. And we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more women, get more amazing speakers for you, and bring the most cutting edge information. If you found these podcasts helpful, please take a moment to text five women you know the link to the series. We appreciate your help so much. Can't wait to see you next time.